Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, what we're going to go over and what we talked about in the thumbnail is, did you get played? And if you did get played, what to do for next time? We're going to take a look at what is going on with this Wyckoff method. And if we overlay it over uh, the Bitcoin charts, we see what's going on. But not only about that, we're going to take a look at the, the uh, manipulators that were behind this and what's going on. So we're going to take a look at uh, Guggenheim CIO, Scott Guggenheim, as he talked about Bitcoin going to 600,000 then calling it uh, essentially tulip mania. And then all of a sudden, uh, that company registers a fund that allows Bitcoin exposure. Crazy. So we'll take a look at that on top of the fact that financial institutions can now provide consumers easy access to Bitcoin via Fiserv and NYDIG. And this is a much bigger story than what you realize because banks and credit unions of all sizes and a lot of different areas are going to be able to allow cryptocurrencies and digital assets to essentially every single person. So we'll take a look at what is going on that. First, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. And today it is uh, 23rd of June. It's about uh, 1 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And look at that. Market cap went from, I think, 1.09, 1.10 trillion market cap all the way to 1.35 trillion, just like that, 24 hours. That is crypto and digital assets in a nutshell. So if you're new to this, uh, don't be scared. That's normal. I mean, this was a little bit bigger. But uh, it is what it is. And when people talk about how, uh, you know, everything's different, it's not different. It's the same thing repeating over and over and over again. And as I've been in this, this market longer, and nothing really surprises me. And just like yesterday when we talked about what to do, and I said, I'm just going to hold because uh, it'll just bounce back. And sure enough, here we are. So that's essentially that part. Let's take a look at some real quick prices. I don't want to delve into this uh, too deeply, but Bitcoin was below 30,000. I, I think it touched around 29.4 at some point. Now it's at 33,293. So if you if you held good job, if you weren't able to hold and you said, hey, I got to sell off because of, for my family, whatever else, hey, that's fine. But if you panic sold, this is the thing to reflect and just look back and go, you know, should I have done that? Was there a better option? and just learn from uh, whatever it is that you you, you took from this. So uh, on this channel, it's not investment uh, advice, it's investment opinion, and I can just only tell you what I'm doing personally. I can't tell you what to do because my goals are not your goals. And uh, here's the prices. So in the last 24 hours, 2%, I think it's a little more than that. Uh, Ethereum uh, is up, Binance, everything's up. 15% for Dogecoin, wow, Dogecoin, watch out. 3% for Polygon, everything else. And also we're using Trade the Chain, Sentiment analysis, it scrapes all the, uh, all, all the websites, all the exchanges, blogs, and all that stuff, and also integrates with uh, Twitter to give us a sentiment analysis. So let's just click on the one hour projected range. Holy smokes, what is this? What? Let me blow this up so you can see this. It's a little, little crazy. Uh, over here in this one hour projected range, see that middle part right there where it says uh, it's got 39.12%, then 74% up, and 188%. Uh, on top of that, that middle number is with 90% accuracy where it's going. And then this next one, 16%, 5%, 3 and 3. If you're looking at that, that's... So I'm not a trader, but if you were, Bridge Oracle, GNY, Teller, Fusion, Hi-Fi Finance, Omisego, Theta Token, T-Fuel, those are probably the big winners in the next hour. And also, uh, speaking of that, um, if you're looking for Trader Chain, you can find the, the link in the uh, description below. It's always there. But... Uh, I want to say congratulations to Trade the Chain because they released their SENT token a couple of weeks ago and already it's on the exchange of Bitcoin.com. So congratulations to everybody over there, Alex and the gang. Uh, great job. I mean, I know it wasn't easy and then here we go. On top of that, I also want to say that uh, the SENT token, it's not that much. There's not many as far as like tokenomics goes. It uh, For yesterday, it, it held its value pretty well. It only went down 5%. And then it did bounce right back up. Now it's like 0 0.03 cents or something like that. So uh, just so you know, I mean, Bitcoin.com is uh, one exchange that it got listed on. I have a theory that uh, that's going to be listed on a lot more. And what it does is it allows you to get a uh, uh, reduction in your fees for all the different uh, exchanges that you trade on. And that's why I think this, obviously it's going to be traded on a lot more places. And then there's some more information coming on. On top of that, just so you know... My friends over there, Trade the Chain, they're doing a cent trading competition, 20,000 bucks. I am not a trader. So the answer to your question is, Rob, are you going to uh, enter this competition? No, I am not a trader. There's no leverage trading or nothing crazy going on like that. If you want to uh, enter that, that's free to enter. 
Uh, um, there's a link in the description as well. It's gonna be right underneath the, in, in the description, the basics. You just click on sign up and apply. The prize fund is 20,000. They've already got hundred people signed up and the prize funds go th from one through s uh, a lot actually. And it's, you know, sign up for, sign up and apply and uh, see how you do. So if you're a big trader and you think you're the greatest of all time or like the world's greatest trader, then <laughs> enter the competition and win some money. That's, uh, that's what it's there for. All right. So that's what's going on. Let's go into today's top story. Before I do that, I want to uh, steal this from Lex Friedman. And it's a, just a piggyback on what we just talked about. And Lex is an uh, uh, AI guy. He's a podcaster, but uh, he's been around, uh, he does a lot of, he's a prolific person. And, what he's, and he was the last one to actually interview Charles Hoskinson. And he says, look, he goes, short-term price, high or low, is not an indicator, a good indicator of how good an idea is. If you believe in a thing, person, or company, invest in them long-term. Otherwise, it's just wild gambling. Then again, all of life is one big roll of the dice. So just try to remember that. Uh, it's not so much, uh, you know, like just getting in there and all those things. Just look at a project that you uh, agree with, think has real-world utility, has a great team, and you believe in them, and just go down that route. That's uh, usually the only way that I, I invest, and um, I just uh, invest in people. So that's all I got. All right. So uh, this was a pretty good graph. This is from uh, CJ and Monty over at Market Rebellion. And then what they did was they, they overlaid um, uh, the Wyckoff chart, uh, which is which really what it comes down to is just shows you how uh, everything is manipulated and how big institutions will manipulate things to crash the price, make it go sideways. And then once it's down that low level and they can accumulate, it goes right back up. And that's essentially what's happening here. So as you can see, let me uh, make this uh, quite big. So you can see it, uh, this right here, overlaid over the Bitcoin chart, pretty much uh, mimics it darn near exactly. Remember all these dips that we had? And it was like, oh, a dip of a dip, and then it happens again, and it goes up and down again, and we're certain sideways. This is what the guys are pretty sure we're at. They're not 100% sure, because nothing is 100% in life, right? But they do believe that we're at this point and we're going to take off. Now, the real question is, was this a dead cat bounce? Were we going to see uh, more volatility or go down again another dip before it takes off? I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you what I'm going to do to make it quite simple. I'm just going to buy and hold. That's very boring. And I don't know. It, to me, it just, it just makes a lot of sense. Just buy and hold and just kind of hang on. Because, like... Look at like the Winklevoss twins. What did they do? All they did was just buy and hold. They didn't do anything spectacular or fantastic. Just like, well, I'm going to buy this. Just sit on it. And that's pretty much it. Uh, so like if it goes up tomorrow, great. Uh, if it goes down tomorrow, well, it went down. I mean, if you don't like the price, just stick around. Uh, it's like the weather in Houston. It'll change. And uh, that's where I think we're going. But the big thing for me is that not that this is going on because we know what is happening. But when I take a look behind the stories, this is what I see as far as, uh, because this is all about manipulation, so that these big institutional players can get in and get their price points, and so they can stock up, and then they can ride it all up, because they kind of missed the boat, let's be honest. Uh, we front ran them. <laughs> see, should have been quicker. And the only way that they can get into it is for us to sell. So, <laughs> excuse me, this is Guggenheim CIO, Scott Minard, or Minard. <laughs> and he, in uh, February 3rd, 2021, uh, and uh, Guggenheim has like, uh, I think uh, almost 300 billion assets under management, pretty big company. And he came out and said that Bitcoin could eventually climb to 600,000. It was a big story. It was really excited because, you know, traditional finance guy that loved that. And then uh, they were really happy with, with, with Scott. And then all of a sudden, price started to go up pretty high. Remember, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars. Then all of a sudden, Scott's like, hey, you know what? Uh, this was in May 20th. Good times. Actually, May t around May 12th or so is when I think we hit like uh, Bitcoin all-time highs. And that was in May, 64,000. All of a sudden, Scott's like, hey, you know what? Pump the brakes. Crypto has proven to be tulip mania. As prices rise, tulip bulbs and cryptocurrencies multiply until supply swamps demand at previous market clearing prices. It's a nice word salad. I mean, it really is. I mean, good for him. Scott's a smart guy. But, uh, you know, a lot of people look at this and go, ah, I knew it. I knew it was bad. I knew it was going to work. And all these, all these people around me who are getting loaded on crypto, I knew it the whole time. So 
that's just a, another example. And then a couple of weeks later, he came out and was and was and said, uh, you know, on a tweet, "Hey, be very careful because this is a very volatile market, and uh, you know things go down pretty quickly." And then, all of a sudden, on June second, Guggenheim registers a fund that allows Bitcoin exposure. And this was, you know, it's the twenty third today. I mean, it's, it was a while ago, but uh, there's still been things that have been put out. Scott doesn't need to be the only fudster out there to drop the market. He's got his buddies. In traditional finance, and they can do all the same things. Not that they're doing that. I don't want to get sued, but you know, they're doing that. So it's, here's the article Guggenheim Funds Investment Advisors LLC filed a registration statement with the US SEC for the Guggenheim Active Allocation Fund. Guggenheim Investments has about 270 billion. Okay, 270 billion. The following describes the fund as a newly organized, diversified, closed-end management investment company. And this is what it states. The filing states this. The fund may seek investment exposure to cryptos, notably Bitcoin. <laughs> Amazing. Through cash-settled derivative in instruments, such as cash-settled exchanges traded futures, or through investment of vehicles that offer exposure to Bitcoin, or other cryptocurrencies through direct investments or indirect exposure, such as derivatives contracts. No, I didn't slow down uh, the speed of the video. I just want to make sure everybody was aware. Because some people say, oh, it's just futures, whatever else. Direct investments. Sure. And to finish this up, while Menard has a long-term prediction of 600k for Bitcoin, he's been saying that the price of Bitcoin will crash in the short term and could fall 50% to the 20K to 30K level. Amazing how we predicted it and it actually came true. I would love to talk to Scott. Maybe he can tell me my future. According to the SEC filing, Menar will be responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the Guggenheim Active Allocation Funds portfolio, which would include fudding on Twitter. No, I'm just kidding. That's not, that's not, his, that's not don't sue me. Menard tweeted, Menard tweeted on May 28th, Crypto investors, be warned. Be prepared for a volatile holiday weekend. So <laughs> the more things change, the more they stay the same. And everybody talks about how different it is and institutions are going to buoy everything. It's going to keep the price of Bitcoin up. Look, as long as greed and manipulation and, and people who, who want to be in power still exist in the, in, in the human race, it'll always be pretty much the same. I believe the price will go up as we see more mass adoption. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But in this case, it is the same thing around and around. Remember in March 2020 when COVID came around and the, the crypto market just fell down to the floor? Same thing as equities. And people are like, this is different. This is totally different. And it's not going to, it's not a comeback. Well, guess what? It came back. And now we just saw this whole thing with <clears throat> China and their, their miners leaving. Like, this is different. It's, it's, it's not going to, it's, it's going to fail. And it came back. It's always the same thing, just repeating over and over again. And I, I can't say any clearer. Maybe I can make my point on this one. So <clears throat> this next and last article, financial institutions can now provide consumers easy access to Bitcoin via Pfizer. Uh, bank and credit unions of all sizes can facilitate buying, selling, and holding Bitcoin within their digital banking platform. So <clears throat> this is a publicly traded company, uh, Fiserv. The ticker is FISV. It's a leading global provider, global keyword of payments and financial services, technology solutions, and NYDIG, a leading Bitcoin technology and financial services company. They're, they're the ones that flew under the, the radar, NYDIG. Um, MicroStrategy gets all the, the accolades, but these guys at NYDIG, they're the ones that are like the adults in the room, pulling all the punches or pulling all the, uh, the right people together and really getting things done, just like something like this. And they, they did this like a couple of weeks ago, with the same type of thing where they're like bringing everybody together. Watch out for NYDIG. Uh, they are the big players, I think, in the space. Anyhow, <clears throat> this will enable bank and credit unions to meet growing mainstream interest in Bitcoin, retain and grow their customer base, and increase non-interest income opportunities. That's good for banks because 30% of uh, physical brick-and-mortar stores, as far as like the banking financial institutions, uh, they are closing down because people are doing everything online. So why do you need a brick-and-mortar store? And uh, that's lost revenue. So interest in crypto... <clears throat> Maybe not lost revenue. Maybe it's actually it's a pretty good. It's low as your overhead. Interest in cryptocurrency and particularly Bitcoin has skyrocketed over the past several years to the point that Bitcoin investing is now a commonplace activity. 
This is how commonplace it is. The thing about Bitcoin and, and the cryptocurrencies to, to a larger extent is that people trust crypto because they can get behind it. There's no, there's no puppeteer uh, behind the curtain controlling the strings. I mean, in some DeFi products there are, but uh, you know, for, for the most part, Bitcoin is one of those great things. There's no CEO, there's no head person, there's nobody. There's a guy named Satoshi Nakamoto, but nobody knows who the heck he is. So <clears throat> for this one, I can see why this article came out, and this will make sense in a second. This was from MSNBC or CNBC a couple, uh, actually yesterday. It says, crypto is the future of finance, why Gen Z is ditching traditional investments. Uh, many people in the early 20s, that's Gen Z, are bullish on crypto. This includes coins, blockchains, Bitcoin, Ethereum, meme coins, <laughs> like Doge, NFTs, or non-fungible tokens, and DeFi, or decentralized finance. This is the interesting thing, two pieces. Nearly half of millennial millionaires, half of millennial millionaires have at least 25% of their wealth in cryptos. And according to the, this new survey, more than a third of millennial millionaires have at least half their wealth in crypto and own half, about half on NFT. So what that says to me is if, uh, if you're gonna be a millionaire uh, as a millennial, chances are a lot of them are into crypto because that's probably the best opportunity that they could find. And it worked out pretty well for them. And then to finish up, there's one reason young people have turned to alternative investments, which is like crypto, which is simple. Many don't trust traditional institutions. They prefer to rely on their own research rather than use insights from additional institutions like financial advisors from legacy firms like Guggenheim as they pull their nonsense and all their FUD and everything else as they dip the price so their big time players can get in and then the little people can come in, come in the side. On top of that, I think there's a reason why, not just on financial institutions and why people turn to crypto and digital assets, I think there's a reason why you're watching this channel right now. And I think there's a reason why YouTube and YouTubers and all those people that are, that are coming up uh, have a bigger audience than what anybody thought possible. And it's the reason is because just like the younger generation does not trust the institutions as far as financial, they also don't trust the institutions as far as media service. So the traditional mainstream media, I think is dying a slow death. I mean, there's always gonna be people that watch it, but I wanna show you something real quick. This is from statista.com. And it takes a look at the leading cable news networks in the U.S. in May 2021. This is the entire month of May, last month, by number of primetime users and their demographics. So real quick, May, the whole month of May. This is Fox News. This is CNN. This is MSNBC. See, it says 2,166. That's the number of viewers in, blow this up, the number of viewers in thousands. So essentially for the entire month of May in primetime, they had 2 million 166,000 viewers. Okay. And then for the demographic that they could actually kind of, that is like the golden demographic that they really want, 25 to 54, that's where all the money's at. They could, they could calculate that it was 345,000. Of course, there's some data that's missing, but sure, whatever else, right? So, so maybe they have like 2.2 million. CNN, 913,000, 218,000. MSNBC, 1.5 million plus 200,000. So why do I bring this up? It's because if you look at my channel, just my channel, I'm not even that big. I mean, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just not. I'm, I'm like 230,000 subscribers, but that doesn't translate to views. I, the views some range between 40 and 60,000 usually per video, right? So let's just say 50,000. 50,000 times 10, that's 500,000 in 10 days. And then in 30 days, I'm gonna get 1.5 million. My viewers for the month of May equal out to Fox News, more than CNN, and MSNBC, well, about the same as MSNBC. So why? Why? Because they don't trust these other places, just like they don't trust the institutions. And I think that is the big thing about what is going on. And that's why I think crypto is going to do so well, because people just see it and they go, you know what? I don't trust that, but I trust this. Anyhow, to finish this up, uh, Byron Beeler, I think that's how you say him, Chief Digital and Data Officer at Fiserv, uh, people continue to turn to financial institutions as a central place to manage their financial activity and being able to offer this capability will help position banks and credit unions at the forefront of their customers' financial lives. And to finish this up, when I read this, I'm like, all right, that's interesting, but who cares? But I thought about it. 
And I'm thinking to myself, you know, to get all this done, you had to clear a bunch of regulatory hurdles because you have to go through the banking system, right? So if NYDIG is working with the banking system and everybody else, as far as like just these financial institutions, then the regulation itself, even though it's not in place in stone, we're moving in the right direction in this country and probably in Europe as well. But do you see the dichotomy between where the rest of the world is going and where like China is going? China just shut down all the mining operations. China just banned, again, uh, cryptocurrency. They've been banning it since 2017. It's not nothing new. But they closed a lot of loopholes, so you can't do OTC type of trading, which I guess is going to hurt Binance and a bunch of other different exchanges, whatever. Um, I just see how like China's like, we're going this way. And the rest of the world's like, we're going this way. And who's going to win out? I can just tell you that if you look at, it, at a pieces of history, it doesn't bode well for a lot of communist countries and what they try to do to oppress people and how they try to take uh, absolute control, absolutely. So uh, we will see how it goes. I'm just glad I live in this country and uh, not over there. I feel sorry for the Chinese people because I know that the, the majority want cryptocurrency and they can't have it. It's the government itself that's cracking down. And uh, I'm glad that all the Bitcoin miners are coming this way. Anyhow. So that's it for today. Look, uh, if you've made it to the end, I want to say thanks for going all this way. Uh, don't forget that uh, there is that trading challenge for Cent Token. Links in the description. I will not be participating. I'm not a trader. And uh, lastly, make sure you subscribe if you like videos like this. We talk about these things every single day about what's going on in the news. Over on Dan Clips, our second channel, we take a look at the up and coming projects. So also check that, that channel out. Link in the description. And that's it for today. And uh, very finally, finally, these, uh, these pieces that, that keep rotating over here. If you're looking for like re real crypto art, I mean, physical crypto art, uh, there is a, a link in the description. Also with all the different uh, artwork that you can hang in your wall. And they range from, uh, you know, 24 by 24 all the way up to, I, I think, like 48 by 72 or something like that. All acrylic, beautiful paintings. And you can find those at uh, Crypto Art. Anyhow, that's it for today. Thanks so much. See you in the next one.